Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Could we have uh, attention now, people who are here? Okay, from here? Okay. Could we have uh, attention, people who are here? I know we don't have all the people who, is, who are supposed to be here, but we cannot wait. So we're going to start. And the first volunteer, would he, he or she please come and sit at the chair here facing us. Thank you. Anybody? All right. All right. And then you simply sit down and uh, state your name and uh, where you come from, maybe. Yeah. Number seven. My name is Brent Stewart. Is that better? Ah, my name is Brent Stewart. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Welcome, Brent. Thank you. So we have your chart here. It's um, 11.37 is the birth time for November 2nd, 1957, Seattle. So that should be the right one, okay? Okay. Okay. So our... Um, our focus today together will um, will be about trying to talk about um, the soul, the soul angel, the soul purpose, and try to um, bring that forth in some way or other through the different positions in the horoscope here. If you have any particular question uh, or, or slant or perspective that you would like um, us to view, you can always state that as you sit down, um, but otherwise we will try to elaborate on the sole purpose in general uh, concerning the chart. That sounds fine with me, Nicholas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So in this horoscope we find um, Leo rising, the rising sign as we know is showing the way in which the soul is seeking for us to go. So it's like a pathway for us, um, indicating that we as personalities should move in that direction, in that qualitative, energetic direction of which uh, the rising sign is the indicator. So the rising sign holds something which will lead us towards the solar angel, if you put it in that way. So Leo rising, in this case, is a fire sign. So maybe you uh, need to embody in this lifetime fire uh, to a certain extent. Um, fire is related to the mind very much. So the mind and using the mind uh, will be an important feature for you in this lifetime. One could imagine. Um, Leo is, however, also a sign that governs and rules that center in our body, which we call the heart center. And the good thing about Leo is then that it is a very mental sign in many ways, as the fifth ray is passing through that sign, and it's a fire sign, but it also governs the heart. So the, the beautiful thing about Leo is then that through that one sign, you are given the opportunity and the possibility to relate heart and mind together. And hence, that could be one of the important indications with such a rising sign. The ruling planet for the rising sign is the sun itself. 
and we find it at the very bottom of the horoscope here in the fourth house of Scorpio um, at 10 degrees and it's standing there together with the north node. The north node is a point of direction in itself. It's, show, it's showing us a way to move, um, to, to, uh, to uh, build in certain qualities into our form nature, into our personality, which the personality may be lacking, which will make that personality a better instrument later on for the soul itself. So there's something about Scorpio that you may need to integrate uh, into your personality to, to build it up as an instrument for the soul, therefore. We do know that Scorpio is a sign of the warrior, for example, where you have to confront your own limitations, your own darkness, and the depths of your own being. So this power to confront those limitations within you and outside of you, in a certain way, in the world around you, may be important for you to incorporate. In a way, you can see this as part of the daring of the heart, which then would relate your sun sign with your rising sign. So to dare could be an important feature, therefore. That node, conjunct your sun, is also indicating that for you in this lifetime, there is not a straightforward path, but there is for you, well, there will be emerging for you a straightforward path, but it's not along the line of the material realm, because that will only lead so far for you in this lifetime, and there will be a reorientation process which is quite definite when the sun is thus conjunct the north node. The north node leads to the fulfillment in a certain way of personality integration. But once that is attained, you need to go in another direction. And in a way, you are then heading back towards the south node in the opposite sign, which is found at your mid-heaven in Taurus, the bull standing there together with the earth itself in a sign of the element earth as well. So there's something about embodying things and bringing things down fully into the form here, which then will be part of your process. You might say that the seventh ray is thus indicated because it's the ray of, of the magician who is bringing the highest into the very lowest. The seventh ray is also the ray of the planet which lies closest to your ascendant, the planet Uranus, found in the twelfth house. And <coughs> there's something about the uh, hidden realms that for you need to be made available, made visible, made present. Um, that is somehow driving you onwards. Then we need also to involve the esoteric ruler of the rising sign, which is the planet Neptune, which is said to be veiled by the sun on the esoteric level. It just so happens that Neptune is also found in the sign of the, the scorpion again adding to this power to overcome obstacles and limitations within one's own nature. It also emphasizes, should we say, the, uh, the spiritual warrior within, combining Neptune with Scorpio. That's a powerful spiritual warrior um, sign in, in, in any horoscope, and it can really make someone into a glamour buster, someone who can work in the astral realm and can
clarify the nature of that, disperse all that which clouds the vision of man. So this is probably part of your sole purpose in this incarnation. On the inner planes, and then also on the outer planes, in the way that you may work concretely with things that are to be made visible uh, and more clear on the outer level. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, in the two minutes I have left. One. <laughs> one, one minute. I'm going to focus very quickly on one thing. Um, I am um, feeling a very powerful um, uh, Sagittarian energy. You already have Saturn and Venus there, but you see you have a Sagittarian uh, decanate rising of Leo. And I am looking mainly on the Mercury, uh, which you have square to that point of the ascendant. And Mercury is your esoteric ruler of the nine house, which is a Sagittarian house. And this is leading me with the, with the already powerful um, presence of two planets in Sagittarius, uh, that you know the vision. I see very important for you to, to, to vision the, the, the path. You know where you are standing on that. And Mercury, as the esoteric ruler of that Aries nine house, uh, I see the abstract mind involvement here, the higher mind, had to be grounded and used, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the fulfillment uh, of that sole purpose, where the concrete mind being involved, but the focus is more on the higher mind here. Mm. So, uh, this is, you know, um, I, as I, we need to stop right here. So this is something I want to bring to your attention because you also have a strong third house, which is a mental house. So the three, five uh, meditative antakarana building uh, process is very part of this, what I am uh, trying to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Okay, good, 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 good. So, how many are, are we in here? Okay, okay, okay. okay next, please. Which one do you want to use? Which one? This one. Yes. So play, please state your. Um, no, that's okay. Please state your name. And, My name is Diu Ross. Diu. Okay. Do have that here? Yeah. Please state number one hundred and thirty-five. So this this is. This is the chart we have on the screen. One. Okay. Is this the correct one? Yes. Yes? Yes? yes. Okay, good. Hello in Estonia, yes, okay. Welcome to you. So, would you like to start this? Or, well, or, uh, or should I um, do something first? And then shorter this time. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, Theo. So, um, we have another individual with Leo rising, it seems, according to this time. This time it's early Leo rising. And we find the sun, in this case, in the opposite sign to the earlier example, where it was in Scorpio, we find it here in Taurus. So here we have a Leo-Taurus combination. And um, that can be a very prideful combination, of course. Both of those signs are known as very prideful signs. Um, again, we can see that uh, the sun is in the 11th house, which is the Aquarian house, and it sits there together with 
Jupiter, uh, to mention one of the planets there. And um, Aquarius is the opposite sign to Leo. And that axis of development relates very much to the development of self-consciousness and group consciousness. So there seems to be something going on in the horoscope here which, which deals with uh, how you are supposed to be integrating your individual with uh, certain groups and yet retain your individuality, your detachment, and bring the gifts that you can into the group. So this is like a little theme that you seem to be working on in this lifetime to, to kind of get, get some kind of a balance out of that. The individuality and the group uh, immersion and consciousness. Taurus is a sign of light uh, and you have the sun together with Mercury uh, also in that sign. And close to uh, the midheaven, we find two other influences that can be very light-filled, and that is the uh, planet Venus and the moon. So the whole theme of light seems to be very important to you in this lifetime, um, to, to bring it into yourself and into your life and radiate that light through your being and through your body even, to make it very concrete, uh, seem to be part of what uh, one of your tasks in this lifetime. So to embody the light. And what is the light? It's the light of wisdom. It's the light of, the light of understanding. It's the light which comes from compassion and love as well. Okay, <clears throat> I will follow on what Nicholas is saying with that Taurian energy, where is also your Mercury in Taurus. Now, what it's saying to me, a lot of accumulation of knowledge over not only uh, through this life, but through past lives. Uh, that aspect from that Mercury square to your ascendant, which is the sole purpose, it's, um, how would they, it's very challenging energy with that Mercury. So, it's some kind of obstacle being standing here from that Mercury to fulfillment of that sole purpose. And because a Taurus holds everything in, and the knowledge here, for me, it's being held inside. And it needs to be released out for that sole purpose, you know, to, to use that, that knowledge and share it out. Uh, because it is, it is somehow not being fully expressed in that sole purpose. Um, here, astrologically, we, we've been talking about this uh, to you through our little groups uh, during uh, this uh, uh, seminar. So you see, this is a very important, a very important aspect to that ascendant. And I think this is the only challenging aspect to that ascendant with that Mercury. So, the, the, the light which Nicholas was emphasizing, uh, you know, of that Taurus, the Ajna, uh, need to now shine on that mind. The mind stabilized, you see, it stabilized 10 house up there in Capricornian house, standing on that mental plane and the light shining from Taurus on that mind need to now release uh, all that knowledge, but now raise it, you know, to the soul, 
to express it through that light because the blockage is the concrete mind which is blocking that light. Um, because you holding that through, you know, you say you have a fifth ray mind, um, which is, you know, very, uh, how would I say, it's, it's concerned on, on the knowledge, again, focus on the knowledge, uh, on the concrete knowledge here. So once the light releases and raises that knowledge, into the soul, the son of mine start to express which is part of your soul purpose in this life. And this is, this is one of the most important uh, thing for you to realize because you have a great potential, you know, to teach, to, you know, to express Leo it's a very uh, self-expressing to express that what I have. It is also necessary part of your integration process. That is another, another area which Leo is involved in. Integration of the personality and expression of that out. And you see, what when I am looking at the node axis, the south node rising in Leo in the first house, across to the seventh house, from Leo to Aquarius. What I have, I need to share through the group, through others in the Aquarian axis there. See? Because if we're taking, we're coming from the past, there is you know, we, we, we are having the South Node in the identity sign and in the identity house, which is the Aries first house. So for you, it's also important from where you are coming and where you are, what, what is the goal with the, with the North Node? You need to be with people, you see, in a group process. And um, uh, if you see that that Mercury is making T-square, you know, with this nodal axis, you see what I mean? Mercury square both nodes, okay? So this, uh, this is a very important uh, life for you to turn around things in, men in, a, in a new, higher dimension, more towards the soul here, and expressing the higher qualities. Because, you see, the esoteric ruler, Aries, Merc Mercury is esoteric ruler of Aries. Where is the Aries? It is what we call intercepted on that highest level of the chart, you see? Uh, that it's adding the importance of the mind again, the focus, develop mind, holding it there, but in the light of the soul, okay? Yes. From the mind, I come forth from the mind, from the place of mind, I rule, but we're talking about the higher, higher yes. mental plane. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you very much. The last comment would be that Neptune is your esoteric ruler veiled by the sun and is found in Libra together with Saturn there. And Saturn is, is um, governing the, the sixth house here. And <coughs> it has to do with the, the specif specification of, of what it is that you do from day to day on a daily basis in terms of your, your service work for one thing. So to develop uh, 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 the right habit and ritual for the day, to go through certain matters as part of your daily uh, life will be important to build in the spiritual qualities in your everyday mundane life.
your name and Kay Helen. Yeah. Australia. Australia. So this is uh, January 31st, 1940, for 10.30, it's Mackay, Australia. Does it seem correct? That's right. Okay. Yes. Well, in, an, in a certain sense, we have another Leo rising because it's the Leo decanate of Aries rising here. The second decanate of Aries is, is, is uh, connected to Leo. Planet Mars, which is also a ruler of Aries, is close to the Ascendant, adding you know, fire and energy and uh, um, activity to you. And uh, maybe that is something that you need to build into your life, uh, at least as a foundation but that can also generate a lot of friction in one's life and things can got, get quite hot so this friction it may not be uh, what you seek in the long run what needs to be added to this at least is the light that may come from mercury as the uh, esoteric ruler of Aries um, you know, in the early days, Aries is quite blind as to where it's going, but it is certainly going places and bumping into things and learning in the process. But there comes a time when Mercury becomes more active in life and is um, starting a process of, of healing the blindness and opening up one's eyes. And then one sees where one is supposed to be going, uh, or at least what, what one should avoid. Then added to that comes an understanding also of the plan, uh, eventually also brought through uh, the Mercury rulership in Aries. So I guess for you, um, you are probably in that stage um, where you're seeking your place within the greater whole as indicated by that mercury which you have in aquarius together with your son in the tenth house well that's about as clear as you can get as to your place and standing within the greater whole and what it is you may do to serve and, and, and fulfill your function within that greater whole. So in this lifetime, something of that nature should be revealed to you quite clearly and specifically. A, 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 a realization which you then can build upon in uh, succeeding lives. But some impression which will, uh, which will be very profound for you. Okay, well, um, uh, what I want to focus is, uh, you see you have an axis which are in a grand cross. You know, they are almost in the same degrees. I see, you see, 14, 14, 14, 14. You see this axis. So it means the whole chart somehow is involved in that sole purpose. Mm. You know, the fundamental axis of the Dharma, you know, the other people here, and here the grounding point. We have a hierarchy, ashram, soul, and its expression out. And what you see is the red lines going towards that point of that sole purpose.
degree here from the Dharma to the IC, which is the home or grounding point, but it is really the ashram. And the only planet involved with this, uh, with this uh, red squares, the challenging aspect, is this Chiron as the focal point, you see? It's conjuncting uh, the, the, the fourth uh, house here, the I see the grounding point, but this is, you know, it's very subjective area, it's very subjective energy, and uh, if you want to keep it on the highest level, you know, we're talking relationship also, not only to others, but also to the master, to the hierarchy and fulfillment of that. And what is standing, um, you know, in the way of expressing that because it's a very important part of your soul purpose expression in this life. Now we do know that Chiron, it's the wound, but it's also the healer. It's also the master as an as energy. You see? So how to express that? What some kind of karmic, a karmic past release with that moon in Scorpio has to happen in order for this beautiful guiding uh, energy, you know, to be released. And maybe you know you know what I am, uh, where I am heading with this, uh, that um, because this seems to be the major challenge for you, I feel, mm -hmm. in expression of the Dharma. This is very well expressed, you know, you have a great talent with the group, a group process, you know, expressing that uh, communication in, uh, right? Um, but this is what is, if we are focusing basically on that um, sole purpose as we were uh, doing through the, uh, through the group, little group processes, uh, uh, through the seminar, focusing what we have, as, what kind of aspects we have to that ascendant. And for you, you know, this is it. And, uh, you know, to understand it, we need to take the ruler of the Dharma, of the obligation in this life and its fulfillment, and look what that ruler, which is Saturn, doing. And it happened to be in Aries. So it's and in the Aries house, you see? It's not easy, you know, for to move that energy to initiate that energy because you know Aries it's a it's a initiating starting process and when Saturn is sitting there it's it becoming a little bit uh, not so easy to shift holding back not having enough confidence you see this is this is an area you know Leo Leo again decanet as um, Nicholas already said it's the identity in an identity house. Who I am, from what level I need to start and shift. And for you, it's the soul level, you know? How to sh start to shift in these uh, difficult, uh, you know, challenging energies, but you need them. You need them this, as a disciples we need these energies uh, because they are representing a test for us and without the test, we cannot move forward, okay? So the focus uh, of, these, um, of these squares would be to work with that Saturn conjunction here in the first house with the south node uh, and even taking the mass because it's important rule, not the ruler of your ascendant. And the other would be the moon 
and Neptune, which is also related to that sole purpose ascendant with the Leo decanate. So you see, this is all linking us back here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kim. Next brave person. Yes, Hello. Well, yeah. Just give, if you give us your name, we have you here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be the last one, and then <laughs> I changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> yes. You have her? Elino, Elino de, de Tige. De Tige. <laughs> so we can't really focus so much on the degree of the ascendant. So you suggest we go to the to the four wheel to the four wheel? Yes. Have you got any inkling what it could be? Well, she is definitely has Taurus. She has Taurus nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So on, on this picture you have on the inner wheel uh, your, your uh, birth horoscope, but as we said, we don't know exactly as to the position of the horizon and the ascendant here. But this is a hypothesis at least that it could be Pisces according to Michael. Then in the uh, second wheel you may have the secondary progressions. And then in the outer wheel, we have the transiting planets for this time. Is that Uranus? Is that Uranus in Taurus there? Yes. That's the only planet in Taurus, right? Yep. And the progressed ascendant is already in Gemini. Yeah, according to this time. According to this time. Well. So we can't really rely on that. No. Okay. Well, my, I'm going more how you look, and my intuitive uh, that I definitely see Taurus in you. Okay. And I'm just looking at that Uranus 
as the only planet in Taurus and it's not good enough for me. Uh, because it is, it is really what we call more the higher energy of that planet and it, it not always it's showing physically like you know the moon or the sun or the ascendant or the ruler of the ascendant. Uh, so I would say that the Pisces is not telling me what I see and what what is there as my first impression. I would, I would have liked to have seen something more definite in a way of the Torian energy, but we can look the other way to arrive at that energy to, to make it more significant uh, that um, to take the rulers of Taurus which would be Venus, and that Venus is in Leo, in the first degree of Leo. And unfortunately, you know, we, you will discover where your Vulcan is from David more, <laughs> um, but it's usually around, around the sun, so it would be in Gemini, right, Nicola? Yes, correct. Yes, so it would be definitely in Gemini, but uh, we don't know what degree, okay? Um, so that sometimes it's the road towards that Torian energy through the rulers, you see? And uh, to find out through, through the placement in the chart how that Torian energy you know, is being expressed. Uh, but I still have a problem with that because, you know, they are, neither of them it's in Torian house, which is the second house, but that Uranus is very strong by the sign and by the house placement because it's in a Taurus house. Now, we can ask ourselves, could this Uranus be the ruler of the ascendant, which would mean Aquarius? Okay? I'm thinking of Aquarius because we are on the, almost on the cusp there between Aquarian and uh, Piscean energy, you see? So it would be a matter of adjustment of the time, but not such a great adjustment. And with still keeping that Uranus, it would be still in Taurus, and I think we could still, with the last degree of Aquarius, get it in the second house. And there would be that, because you know, um, you already have uh, planets in, Saturn is in Pisces anyway, right? Natally. You have, you have Piscean energy. I see that you have Piscean energy also. Uh, okay? These two energies I, I see in, seen immediately myself by the, by the, by the face. Uh, so, um, it is now uh, the question, you know, to, to work, uh, to see how the last degrees of the Aquarius would fit the picture. Um, and that is a very time consuming process. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is my, this is just my thoughts on it. The thing that strikes me here you know, sometimes Taurus and Scorpio have similar factors involved. The, uh, the emphasis upon the Scorpio energy comes through the placement of the, uh, see, what do we have here in, in Cancer? We have Mercury. So that is uh, the Cancerian energy 
And above, we have, if the Pisces is the correct rising sign, and we really have to do a lot of work on that, Jupiter in Scorpio at the top in the Pisces decanate yeah. adds a certain quality that we also see. Yes, yes. And there is some uh, of the Capricornian energy as well, because uh, the position of the Moon and Neptune together in the Capricorn decanate of uh, Virgo. So, uh, and I think we need to concentrate very much maybe on, of course I don't know it as well as others, perhaps, but all the things Eleanor has done in the world as a mother figure and internationally. Yes. Which is mm -hmm. very much that Jupiter in the 10th house. There, there are some reasons why this chart has some value. The, the uh, Jupiter is in the ninth house. No? Ninth house, that's what I meant. I, I meant that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, this international dimension of Eleanor's chart has been very, uh, of her life has been <coughs> extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, that you are right. She has to have that ninth house emphasized. Yeah. Okay, because th for that, you know, foreign influence and then, but also the Capricorn and Saturn. Saturn is there. Saturn, Saturn is that's there. I am sh I can see why you place that Saturn rising there. Yeah, and also, you know, the physiognomy, the, the forehead is, if I may, uh, like uh, Taurus Scorpio. And, and the way the hair yeah. comes down here is yeah. Taurus Scorpio or yes. some Virgo. Yes. So I think we're, sometimes with Aquarius, you have this different kind of forehead, you know. Yeah, but if the ruler is in Taurus. Yes. Yes, no, 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 un understood, understood. So now it has to be life events that need to be brought in. Yes, into exactly. And that's what I said, that it is a time-consuming time task. Uh, uh, task because, you know, we can try to see uh, how the energies would shift with the last degree of that Aquarian because she is dealing with the group process. The Aquarian... No, no, that I, I do get what you say. Yes. There. I do get what you say, and it would leave certain things intact in terms of the house position. Yes. But there wouldn't uh, be such a big shift. Perhaps perhaps, perhaps not. Um, and it needs to be worked on. So it, although it would be lovely to be able to say at this moment exactly what is the rising sign, you do have other things happening which are of, of note. And maybe yes. they should be concentrated yes. upon. Yes, the exactly. Ingress, is that the ingress of the sun into uh, Virgo? Uh, Progress sun, ingress? Yes, it is. It's uh, in the first degree of yes. Virgo. And I, when I, I, Eleanor said, there will, just so long as I have Virgo, she said, something like that <laughs> to me. Yeah. So she's going to have it in spades, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, she has already strong Virgo. Indeed. And, yes. now, and now this new emphasis. So that, w that would have to be uh, done on a one-to-one -one basis with her to discuss uh, what is happening and all that. I will stay up at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are okay, thank you, Evelyn. Could you, just one thing, how could you describe your work if you were to put it in essence? It's, crea it's creative, even though on the surface it looks like uh, global work, it's a totally creative process with people, programs, places, yes. um, and those things that everyone is focusing on now, but from a creative point yes, of so, view. So where does the creativity apply, particularly in other words, what emerges out of the work? The, the creativity comes from uh, the idea coming in and then beginning to develop it, and doing, uh, doing what others are not doing, partic particularly doing it in a different way. So who, so how do people benefit from what you do, more specifically? In lots of ways, it's hard to say. Uh, their life changes, and the programs become stronger. I mean, it's hard to say that because it sounds like <laughs> but is it I'm bragging, but people's lives change, um, and for the better. So is it in the economic field or social field? Uh, all. But economically, there's a lot of abundance that is shared. Uh, um, okay, yeah. okay. Support systems, uh, a lot I of support systems. Right, I have a question. Uh, is it uh, in any way related to ecology? 
Not really. Not, not really. Not, not the way the ecologists work now. But to, uh, to, uh, but to uh, protect the environment? Uh, in no, no, not no. particularly, no. but very much with childbirth and protecting children. Protecting see, this, children. this thing, mm -hmm. you see the position of Sun Chiron in this fourth house like yes. that. Yes. And, 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 the, and the cancer rulership, there's a huge... But you know, children is always Leo, protecting, you see? Don't forget cancer. Yes, that's it, that's it, so... And Virgo. And even... And Virgo, don't forget and Virgo. And Virgo, <laughs> yes, yes, I, I realize the, the, the issue here. We're going to close it And out. you know, Leo would be very, very good on a sixth cusp where you also, you know, taking care, taking care of children. That w it's a good energy to have that. So it, it wouldn't be a very, very easy, you know. Is it five children you had, Eleanor? Mm -hmm. Five children. It, uh, but it's more global village, global family, yeah. global. Uh -huh. Everyone's into the environment. There's one doesn't have to really spend too much time there. Everyone is so busy with mm -hmm. those issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we're not far off. No, mm -hmm. we I are not, not it's not off. far off, it's not far off. I definitely see the Scorpio energy, and the strong Gemini energy is very much evident. And, you know, some of this Capricorn energy, I just think we have to determine the degree to which Pisces or Aquarius is operative. Yes, that's it. We will it. try to do that before you leave here somehow. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Probably that Earth has the most elevated planet is important as well in your global Earth. emphasis. So that seems to be fine with respect it to the seems horse. Like Italy, so it's the good exact place exactly. exactly. where it should be in such yeah. areas. Yeah. Uh, right as the as you say, most elevated in the Capricornian house. I but think, yeah. it has still a leafage there, you know, where the it's seven degrees. Yeah, certainly. You see? Certainly, absolutely. If we had a if we had a planet which was more cuspal. No, it could be on either side of the yeah. midheaven, so there's yeah. there's room for for uh, yeah. There's that's shift why I there. say it's it's a room for shifting uh, shifting the yeah exactly. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, so someone with a we have birth mm -hmm. time this time maybe. Yeah. Uh, Thirteen past. So I am Robin Cornelius and. I am from Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and you've got me. And I've got you. You've yeah. got me. So it's uh, 10, 16 p.m., mm -hmm. seems to be correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. All right, well, this is what we do. This is it. Saturn, thank you. Start. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robin, um, Scorpio rising with Saturn right on the ascendant there. And we find sun, moon standing together in early Aries here as well. Mm -hmm. So you have emphasized two signs uh, in the three most important indicators, ascendant, sun, moon, uh, signs that are governed by the planet Mars. So Mars is a very important planet to you and, and the integration of the energy uh, which it uh, which it holds, and that is uh, activity, that is initiative, that is beginning, it's, it's daring, it, it's the moving ahead onwards, uh, which seems to be important for you to build as a foundation here. Then that has to be somewhat uh, balanced, it seems, because Saturn also sits right at the ascendant here. And Saturn is, in a way, the opposite of Mars. If Mars says go, Saturn says no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and symbolically, it also is opposite to Mars in the horoscope itself here. So there's something about the, should we say, the blind movement and action of Mars that has to be checked. And then Saturn comes in, which is a planet on the third ray of active intelligence, and says, before you move, maybe we should think about this a little bit first. 
see why we are moving. Uh, so the, it, it, you become a bit more cautious and balanced in that sense. And um, having gone through the process of, of analysis and thinking things through, maybe develop a strategy, then, then you proceed. And then you proceed strengthened, one may say, because there is some purpose being integrated in that process of thinking about what you're supposed to be doing. And, and you have a more clear objective of things and you are empowered thereby. And this is an empowerment that you may need because you're supposed to be entering into areas uh, that can be quite uh, difficult to deal with. Much resistance, great obstacles, limitations, darkness within yourself but also in the field outside of yourself. You uh, need to go but empowered, as I say. So this is a good pattern that should give you such, such energy, such daring, such, um, such caution, should we say, as well, and such um, um, clarity of objective intention and purpose. Added to that, you can see that the first ray planet, Pluto, is the planet which is closest to the midheaven here in the first ray sign of Leo. So that adds to you the qualities of the first ray of will and power here to assist you in the breaking through, the, the piercing, and the penetration of that which is standing in your way on the different levels, physical, very concrete, but also on the inner, more subjective levels, the astral plane, the mental plane, and so on and so forth. Of course, all those planes, the 18 lower subplanes of the form nature, they're all to be somehow removed the different obstacles from. So this gives you the power to do, to do that work, um, to transform your own per personality, but also, you know, wherever you find yourself in life, if it's an organization or whatever, you would be able to do such, such work, to carry the energy which is needed and required uh, to, to move on, to move ahead to the next phase. I will continue what uh, Nicholas just said. Uh, what I want to see, this is supposed to be opposition here, yes? yes. mm -hmm. which is not uh, yes. a mark. Um, it's a mark, no. But, you know, it is opposition. Yes, definitely. Right, and so I just pick up what you were saying with that Pluto, which is one of the rulers of the ascendant. Mm -hmm. And I am picking up the T-square the Pluto opposition Venus and both are squaring, you know, the challenging, this is a challenging uh, T-square to that ascendant or sole purpose. And it's taking along with the, the Saturn rising there from the 12th house, if this the, is the correct degree rectified, is it? As close as I know it is. Okay. So maybe that Saturn is in that 12th house because it's, it's a, c a question of four minutes, you see? It's mm -hmm. very close. It can be very easily in the first house, but th that's why I'm asking that, um, how correct is that degree? So this, from the aspect point of view, which we were talking uh, through these little groups, um, how, what are the challenging energies to, to the fulfillment of that sole purpose? You see? Because as Nicholas said, this is a very first ray, 
a first ray placement of that Pluto, and Saturn also carries first ray. You know, it's Saturn Pluto aspects are tend to be also very first ray. And uh, here we have involved planet Venus. Now, we have uh, this is a this is the solar angel here. This is the soul. Uh, this is the fifth ray planet involved in this T square. Uh, and it is very much part of that soul purpose because in a way it is the solar angel. And um, how to now, how to eliminate, as Nicholas was uh, trying to bring this uh, severing, uh, eliminating first ray destructive energy to eliminate the obstacles it's a very, very powerful karmic placement here of that, of that Saturn in the 12th house. You see, in Scorpio, uh, it is um, the release of, of that uh, 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 karmic relationships. You know, Saturn in Scorpio is holding in, not expressing also the power of the of, of the uh, Scorpio energies there. You see, it's being held in with this T square, the, the, the Venus lower aspect of the, of the planet as it represents desire, desire, emotions. This has to be released in order for that higher soul or solar angel energy to be uh, manifesting out, and because it's in a, in a third house, it is a, it is a mental house, it, these are mental houses, lower higher mind, you know, meditative processes. Uh, that is your way to go about how to release it. This is a subjective work, subjective meditative work to, uh, to work on this T-square to raise the lower energies of this planet, which is representing the highest level of the solar angel, the presence, in order to emerge out. Looks like I got my plate full. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Okay. Right. Okay. We go for lunch, and then we come back. So how how many? Uh, how many more do we have after lunch? One. Three. Okay. Three. Good. Okay. So come back after lunch. And and, and uh, all those who already have the charts done, please go to see David to find out where is your welcome. And uh, when do we come back after lunch? Right. Yes, yes. So, so let's uh, come back at 1.30.